listen. I'm not listening, no more. Something's not right here. You have told two different stories here, and that's been our problem from the beginning. I'm not telling you. Hey guys, and welcome back to Little Black Book. You know what time it is. Uh, talking to you guys about uh, 90 Day Fiance, talking about Michael and Angela. Yeah, it's a bit mad, isn't it? Michael and Angela, it's a bit mad. Um, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, subscribe, click on the bell button for a notification of the uploads. For those of you returnees, well, you already know you've got the minerals. You already know you've got the minerals. You already know you've got the minerals. You understand? You got the minerals. You got the minerals. All right, listen, cool. Let's talk about this right. So, obviously, we've got a clash of cultures here and ideologies, okay? Angela is not the type of woman that's gonna take anything from anybody, yeah? She really said straight to herself, listen, not you, your mum, your auntie, not your culture, not your country, not your food, nobody is gonna tell me what to do. I am not bound down to you or no living man, woman at all. At the beginning of this relationship, I told him how I am. I told him the truth. So I get frustrated because I really don't know if Michael's lying to me. At that point, Michael, Michael, Mikhail, Mikhail, Mikhailiel. That point, my brother, you should take your bags and leave. Yes, I'm. But don't let the green card, don't let the, the, the chance of moving to America get you all fundazzled. You understand? And get you all bamboozled. Sir, she told you straight. She's not submitting to the culture, you understand? And as she's as she pointed out correctly when she's talking from her auntie, she said, listen, we've been doing this for three years, my guy. Don't try to pretend as if that you're a different person now. Trust me, you know what you was doing in three, for the last three years. Don't try to change it now, you understand? Um, and so I know that watching Michael and Angela, it makes you laugh, because obviously I, we, we joke about these things, especially when we're younger, about you know uncles marrying these white ladies just for the, for the papers or whatever, et cetera, et cetera. And this don't look any different, okay? At the moment, for me, at the first go, right? I haven't watched it for the last 10 episodes, so I don't know. But it doesn't look like that for me, all right? Um, so what's really interesting is, obviously, um, they've obviously had it from the last episode. I know they had a, a baby issue, which is that she potentially not going to have babies. I think almost certainly not going to have babies. So what do you do then? And she's obviously made it very, very clear, especially in the church. Listen, does that mean you can have side chicks? He said, it said no. It's approved. What about side chicks? Is he allowed to have side no, chicks? No, he's not allowed oh, to have oh, He's not allowed. See? No. Because obviously this is the, uh, not traditional marriage, but this is the legal, um, legal courts kind of marriage, which means one man, one woman. No side chicks, okay? Which means, you're not gonna, if, you don't, if you want kids, she ain't the one for you. She is not the one for you. You ain't for me. You ain't for me. No, 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 no. Hey, 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 hey. I gotta say no, 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 no. You're not for me. Do you understand? So at that point in that time, Michael stepped down, Rude Boy. Yeah? Because look at it already. The culture, she's not doing it. Submission, she ain't doing it. Kids, she ain't doing it. Brother, what are you in a relationship for? Be honest with yourself, okay? Yeah? Be honest with yourself. Is that green card really worth it? Is it really worth your time? Sure. Is it really worth your time, my guy? Probably not. Um, you know, uh, you know, it, it obviously, they were going towards the, the Christian counselling and he said, obviously, don't mention anything about the sex that we have. And then she was like, what, you mean, you mean, I shouldn't mention the fact that I brought handcuffs. I shouldn't mention the fact that, you know, I brought a little thing for your, for your, for your penis. Let's be honest. I brought something for, you know, your, 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 your you know, your secret stick. You know what I'm saying? Are you telling me I shouldn't say anything? Right? What she doesn't understand is that um, culture and religion can, and, and faith mix, um, especially... Um, in Africa, right? It, 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 it used to happen a lot here in UK, and in fact, it still does. Where people wear the label of "I'm a Christian," "I'm a Muslim," "I'm a Jehovah's Witness," "I'm a this and that," but actually, you don't live the lifestyle. They're not about it. Their mind has not been renewed or changed in that respect. And the same thing could be said when you're in Africa too. That there are a lot of people, obviously, that wear the label of Christian because they grew up in a Christian home, but have nothing to do with Jesus Christ. Yeah, I don't want you to start talking about sex or between both of us. Michael, I would be okay if you ask him anything about our sex life, for instance. Nothing to do with Jesus. Nothing at all to do with Jesus Christ. Nothing at all, mate. All right? Yeah? When he said, listen, I don't know you, that's what it means. I didn't know you. You understand? So, um, when they get to the church, obviously going towards the church, because of the religious mindset and the perception, he says, listen, don't say anything. Right? Don't mention anything about sex. Why? Because people start talking. In Africa, they will start talking. They're, they're probably already talking now that you're a white woman with me. They will start talking. I'm there for something that I shouldn't be for. Do you understand? So that was very important also to point that out. Um, and obviously she's been divorced and married before. 
Uh, and then the woman says that was really interesting. Listen, you must sexually satisfy him so he won't go outside. Oh, auntie, no. Auntie, let me tell you something. That is not a truth. That is not a truth. Let me tell you something. These boys are demons. And demons don't need a reason to go and do what demons do. You understand? Demons don't need a reason to do what demons do. Do you understand what I'm saying? Man, woman will cheat. Not because you didn't give them good sex. Although that can be a part of a reason why they cheat. That is not a reason why they cheat. They cheat because the desire is in them. You as a Christian should know this as Christian counselors. The desire in to cheat is in you. It's not outside of you. It is in you more often than not, okay? The external factors are something that can push you towards that decision, but you made it internally first, okay? You made the decision to go and cheat inside of your act first before you go to the outside, do you understand? Okay, so don't blame the good sex. Don't tell her that she should be a good cook. Don't tell her that she should obey. It does not guarantee that Basman will behave himself. That satisfy him. Angela, satisfy him sexually. If you are doing that, his eye will not be outside. Make him happy. When he comes back, the food is ready. That's not guarantee that the man will, will not lay hand on her. That's not guarantee he won't go and cheat out there. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah? Cheating will still go on regardless of whether you cook well, you know, your, your pum pum fire, you know what I'm saying? The sex then ting, hot ting, tong tong. They don't mind blood, yeah? Man, I'm still cheap because it's not about you, it's about them. All right, cool. Um, you know, uh, you know, and she's obviously, look, she's obviously counteracted and said, listen, I'm going to treat you like I treat myself. And then the Bible says, listen, love your neighbor like you love yourself. She was even more close to the biblical truth than the woman that was sitting opposite her. Why? Because the Bible says, love that enemy like you love yourself. Do you understand? So this woman saying, obviously, I'm going to treat him like I treat myself. That is beautiful. Bravismo. You understand? And why? Because the whole point is that God is trying to get us to understand if we treat people like we treat ourselves, we would have more leeway, more understanding, um, uh, more at peace with the decision we make and um, and more respectful of one another and our boundaries because we understand that listen what i do to you is actually doing to me you know what i mean i wouldn't want it done to me so i'm not gonna do it to you do you get it but i'll treat you like i would treat myself this is just the truth <laughs> and it was interesting obviously when it got to auntie because obviously she was like um, to Michael, don't let this woman, you know, control you, you know. Um, and I know she wants to almost, I'm sure what, what was coming out of her mouth was, you white devil, don't let her come. No, so I'm sure that, you know, Africans, that's how we play, we don't play them things. Um, and obviously, like, she was letting them know, listen, this is, let me put you on game, brother. Don't let this girl run you. Don't let this girl have control of you. You run things, you understand? You set levels, you understand? Michael, you set the pace, you set a level. Don't let her dictate to you. But the whole point was that he's he's very placid, he's very mild, he's not he's not about that life. He's not trying to to to, to be aggressive. Why? He needs his green card. You understand? I need my green card. I need to have my green card. Therefore, I can't play with the things. And so when he's trying to calm her down, she's like, no, I'm going. I already told you I'm not a submissive type. And if you need that woman, go after her. Like she's not just saying, listen, I don't, I'm not about that. She says, listen, if you want that woman, I am not it. What a level of honesty and beauty. But oftentimes when we hear those words, we want to ignore it because we have our own agenda. Michael has his own agenda. Isn't it right? Michael, you have your own agenda. What is your agenda? Your agenda is to get a green card. Your agenda is to get into America. You understand? Rather than loving this woman, you understand? And finding one from the from the basins, from the from the from the from the bottom of the wells, you know, of, of Nigeria and its resources. You know what I mean? So I really do think. The truth of the matter is there, like, Angela is going to be Angela. She said, I'm not changing. When someone's not changing, why are you still trying to go after them? Why? Because what you want from them, yeah, isn't necessarily them. It's what they can offer you. That's a user. You've got to be very, very careful of those people, man. That's a user. You feel me? Maybe he needs to find a Nigerian woman. That's it, you know? And, and I'm going to the bathroom and, I, and I'll be right there. Here, right now, if this is how Angela is, when you get to America, there's going to be no family around you. So there's going to be no... Uh, buddy, buddy to be able to help you, you know, acclimatize, speak to you both and actually try to wrestle you into a better position um, in a relationship. You know, as time goes on, you know, things do happen. You need a mediator to come sometimes, come and mediate what's going on with you two. Now, he won't have that in America. He's going to be all alone. All alone, a million miles away. That off, that note was off. Okay. On my own. A million miles away, it's moving on around. All right, cool. And then listen, look, boom. So, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, I, I would say this. I hope, I hope Angela means what she says. 
I like people, I like the hope she means what she said when she said there's too many red flags, I should leave it alone. Cause that is a sign of I'm not doing it. This wedding's off. The red flags has been here from the beginning. Kiss my ass and call me an idiot, cause that's exactly what I'd be if I stay in this relationship. God is telling you, Vamoosh! That is a sign God is telling you to leave it alone. That is a time that the, the, the God in the heavens is telling you, listen, Angela, you don't need this man. Let it be. Go and heal. Go and rest up. Go and rejuvenate. Stop playing with this guy. This guy's not going to give you what you want. You understand? All he wants, it seemingly looks like green card when he gets married to you. Relax, stay in your lane and enjoy the ride. But do not engage on a level where you're going to give yourself over to this man. You don't know what it's going to be really like when he gets over to America. They're going to change, right? And that's what the fear is on the other side. So I get it. I understand. I know that, uh, um, you know, Angela is a strong... Raise your voice at me in front of your aunt. Don't do that. Do not do that. Calm down. You calm down. Don't do that. Independent woman, but she must understand, listen, don't ignore the red flags. When you see the red flags, you must act upon them. You understand? And at the moment, she said it out of her mouth, you know, towards the end when she was leaving, she must act upon it. Because at the moment, Michael's giving her too many red flags and yet she still sticks around. Why? That speaks more to your self-esteem than the actual relationship with the person you're in. Do you get me? Ali, total submission, total submission, total submission. Is the idea of submission. What is submission? What does it look like? How do we define submission? Because that's the real big issue in the actual relationship. Submission, okay, is meaning to yield, but it's a voluntarily yielding your power up to give it to somebody else in order to bring about a reproduction or to say a multiplication. Why? Because yield means to bring forth also. So when, when the woman's given when a woman submits to a man and is given the love. She multiplies it back to him. So you have to understand that a woman's job is to multiply what she's been given. And that submission comes willingly because she understands that someone here is leading with love, intention, purpose, um, uh, uh, you know, and, and leading to protect and to serve them as an individual person, right? But when you're not getting that, and, you're, and you know your only definition of submission is that total submission means I do exactly what my husband says at any cost, whatever the response, whatever he says, even if it's not following Christ, then I'll continue to do so. That's not what the Bible's asked us to do. That's not submission. And the Bible tells us, submit to one another. Okay, so just to let you guys know, make you understand, you understand? Submission is not something to beat your wife over the head with. Submission is coming from a place of the fact that when she sees you, she can respect you and she understands your leadership as a role, as a position to play. Your position to play as a leader is actually to be a servant to the people. The greatest in the kingdom is a servant, not those who are, um, that's why I said John the Baptist, it will be the least of these. Why? Because the whole thing is that it's not about how great you are. It's not about how great your, your future is, but it's about the fact that if you're a leader, you're about here to serve, not to be served. Do you understand? But guys, you know what? It's, it's what it is. It's mad, it's mad, it's lean. You understand? I'm lean, just a little tip say, ah, but I ain't complaining. I'm bad, I'm bad, but I'm bad, I'm bad. Don't forget as well, check our podcast out as well at G's in a pod. You understand when we talk about things, uh, roll stuff as well. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, click on the bell button for notification of the what uploads, baby. We appreciate you and we like what you do, man. Love, man.